Hello and welcome to our first video lesson on Chapter 14, The Citric Acid Cycle, in which we will just briefly look at an overview of the citric acid cycle and of the transition step that feeds into the cycle. You may have heard this pathway referred to by a number of different names. It is the citric acid cycle because the first product in the pathway is citric acid or citrate. It's also referred to as the TCA or tricarboxylic acid cycle because citrate is a tricarboxylic acid. It has often been also been referred to as the Krebs cycle named after the scientist who elucidated the pathway. And looking at the figure on the right, we see that the TCA cycle is a very central pathway highlighted in color here. Multiple pathways feed into it and feed from it. Because the pathway relates to both catabolic pathways and anabolic pathways, we say that the cycle is amphibolic, relating to both branches of metabolism. The other thing we notice in our illustration or figure here is that it is a cyclic pathway, and this is in contrast to the pathways we've examined thus far. Glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and pentose phosphate are all linear pathways, but this is cyclic. We'll look at the significance of this a little later. Let's take a brief look at that transition step that feeds into this cyclic pathway. It is catalyzed by a complex of enzymes known as the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, and we'll look at that in greater detail in the next lesson. In this transition step, we are oxidatively decarboxylating pyruvate to acetyl, and then we transfer that acetyl unit to coenzyme A or CoA. So our substrate is pyruvate, and our main product is acetyl-CoA. We have the structure of coenzyme A on the bottom right of the screen, and the A comes from the fact that adenosine nucleotide is a portion of that coenzyme. You can consider the transition step as a kind of traffic director to control the flow of two carbon units from glycolysis into the citric acid cycle. As mentioned, it is a complex of enzymes. There are three enzymes and several coenzymes. And this is the first of our pathways that's actually located in the mitochondria. And an Ill the figure representing the mitochondria is at the bottom of our slide. Remember, glycolysis occurs in the cytosol, and our product is pyruvate. That is the substrate for the transition step, which occurs within the mitochondria. So our first job to carry out the transition step is to move pyruvate from the cytosol into the mitochondria. We'll look more at the structure of the mitochondria in the next lesson. In this complex of enzymes, illustrated at the bottom right of our slide, the product of one reaction quickly becomes the substrate for the next. So although it looks very complex, it occurs very rapidly. The two carbon unit that is generated actually remains tethered to the subunits through these prosthetic groups that are part of each of these enzyme complexes. And so the two carbon unit gets passed from prosthetic group to prosthetic group until we form that final product, acetyl-CoA. You can think of it as kind of an assembly line production to get to our final product. So in our next video lesson, we'll look in detail at this transition step and see how we convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and we'll look at the role of each of the enzymes and cofactors in this process.